Amen, amen. All this is for you, Jesus. All this is for you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you, team. Welcome to Dove Church, Detroit. We're glad to have you today. And all of this is for you, Jesus. Come on, give him a good praise today. Hallelujah. 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 To all our faithful listeners, we bless you today and thank God for you. We thank you to, to those of you who partner with us in giving. And we appreciate you, every gift uh, that you send to the ministry. We thank God for it. We thank for God for you. And we bless you and we ask that God will return it to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And, and we believe that as you sow into this good ground, good things will happen for you and for someone else. And so we thank you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Well, we're going to move fastly into the message. And, and the first thing we're going to do is our, our confession that we normally do from week to week. Everybody, with your Bibles in your hand, lift your Bibles up or wherever your Bible is. And repeat after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for everything that you allow. We thank you for the entrance of your word is not only life, but it's life. We thank you, God, for the victory we have through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. We welcome your presence. We welcome your guidance. Speak through us as an oracle of God today. Help us to say something that will change and transform lives. God, we're after more than just a good message. We're after a transformative message. So we rebuke every hindrance to the word going forth today and declare excellence and declare righteousness and declare that you are glorified in everything. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. The title to the message today is Let me get situated here. Prophecy in these times. Prophecy in these times. Say that with me. Prophecy in these times. Let me make a few opening sentences about prophecy. Prophecy is legitimate. All of this will come clear as we move into the message. Prophecy is legitimate. Prophesying is legitimate. Prophetic scripture is legitimate.
The office of prophet is legitimate. To preach and teach scripture is legitimate prophecy. To preach and teach scripture <clears throat> is legitimate prophecy. So what is my task? It is the preacher's task to bring a balanced word to the people of God as it relates to prophecy. And we need to make this statement. Occurrences of late in the Christian world has shaken many as it relates to prophecy because of so many prophets that latched on to other prophetic words from other prophets that latched on to other prophetic words from other prophets so they started all saying the same thing and when it did not come to pass it threw a pail over prophecy And so it's necessary that we talk about the prophetic word and prophecy and who prophesies, how to judge it, what to look for. So the people of God won't be fooled. I must say that Men and women do and may be, men and women do and say, but they don't necessarily do and say what God says. We have to be careful. And everybody says that God said doesn't mean that God said it. The days that were prophesied that were coming on us are here. And that day is, the day would come when they would believe a lie before the truth. And we have a whole situation where people believe lies before the truth. And they act on it as if it's the truth. I believe sometimes you can lie so much till it becomes your current reality. That does not make it true because it's real in your head. Are you out there? Let me give you just a basic definition of prophecy from the American Dictionary of the English Language, the Noah Vep. Webster uh, version 1828 and it is a foretelling a prediction a declaration of something to come it's that simple but it gets perverted greatly there again, it is a foretelling, prediction, declaration of something to come. Here are some key thoughts as it relates to prophecy. And we're laying some foundation here. As God only knows future events with certainty, no being no being but God or some person informed by him can utter a real prophecy. The iffy area 
is so many people think they are informed by him. So they utter. But they don't have the, the, the restraint and the structure and the guideline of scripture that should be adhered to that judges all prophecy. So they, re they release a lot of I think. And then when something else happens, you have to kick your prophecy down the road and make it, make it viable and make it real or make it of substance. Well, if you said it was going to happen and it didn't happen, admit that it didn't happen. Don't say, by this time next year it's going to happen. When the event came and gone and went. Prophecy is a God idea. And is used to express his will in the earth. It's a God idea. And used to express his will in the earth. This will is based on established truth. What truth? The truth of his word. Let me get real crazy. The whole Bible is prophecy. From the beginning to the end. The middle of the Bible's prophetic word is a salvation story where Satan had bruised us. But it would say that we would bruise his head. Speaking of when Jesus would come and he would be hung on the cross, he was bruised. But then when did we bruise Satan's head when Jesus got up from the grave? And now we are in the day of another prophetic or foretelling that, that he's on his way back. That's the whole of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Are you there? The Old Testament prophetic word for our current time is this. Joel or Joel 2.28. And when the Bible in the Old Testament said, and it shall come to pass, means it is a foretelling, a prediction. It shall come to pass afterwards. Afterward meaning after the time of this speaking. That I will pour out my spirit, capital S-P-I-R-I-T, Holy Spirit. I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. That's why I take issue with people that decide to determine who can preach and who cannot. And they've genderized it. They did something that the Bible didn't do. And you might have theologically tried to work it through. But what God said in Joel, he means over in Matthew. And he means it over in, in 2021. Your sons and, everybody say and. Your daughter shall prophesy. Prophesy in this, 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 this word's. Position here means to preach. So preaching is prophecy. It expresses the will of God in the earth. Prophetic preaching. And when you become an old man, you just dream. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 
Dreams are inactive and visions are active. When you're young, you can run toward the vision. Are you there? This passage directly relates to men and women preaching and foretelling future events under the power of the Holy Spirit. Which means they will move directly in line with God and his will slash word. Because God's word is his will. Remember this, that the Holy Spirit is not an it. It is not a something. It is God. The Holy Spirit is God. In this day, there have been many prophetic utterances by people declaring God's will as it relates to events or occurrences. They have not come to pass. And you can hold your Bible up. You can do any number of things to make a man's will come to pass. But if God didn't say it, it's not going to come to pass. Our bishop says of the prophet whose, whose prophecy does not come to pass, they are a lying prophet. He said they, 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 are, they are prophet, but they just told a lie. My God. So here is the caution to the church. You must be careful not to become jaded or distrustful of prophecy due to apparent abuses. These abuses serve a particular prophet's political, social, or religious agenda. What agenda are you serving when you prophesy? Is it something you want to happen? So you get imbued with the spirit. And out of your manness or your womanness, not your God, you say, this is what's going to happen. What's amazing now is and wonderful is we're under the period of grace. Because if you were under the Old Testament, you would be stoned. You'd die whether you repented of the prophecy or not. Just because it didn't come to pass. I'm talking about a dated prophecy on this date this will happen like me prophesying over somebody bald head in the house in the next seven days you're going to have a full fluffy afro and you come in the next Sunday and all I see is skin Well, what category are you in then, preacher? The lying prophet category. First Thessalonians 5, 20 through 21. Just so you'll be balanced. I, I have to confess, sometimes I got so many prophecies from people till after a while I started to hate them. Because they didn't come to pass. And I kept saying, I only got this much life. And after you get a prophetic word and 10 years later, it has not come to pass. You start questioning something. Was for this life or was it for the afterlife? Well, in the afterlife, I won't need it. Not that prophecy. So I got a little jaded with them. But I was not correct. Because the Bible says, not Lucille, 
But the Bible says, do not despise prophecies. That means pull them rascals back down and war with them until they come to pass. Now, let me be honest. I have seen many come to pass. But in your humanness, you want to make something happen. Also, people run to prophecies. And they use it as if it's fortune telling. As you, you're consulting the sorcerer or the teacup. Or reading tea leaves or reading the palm in your hand. The palm in your hand is not a, a foretelling of anything. It's just what happened genetically to you. If you look back in your family, somebody has that same shape in their palm of their hand, the way that the lines are. Then that next verse after that, after it says, do not despise prophecy. It goes on to give instruction. It says, test all things. Hold fast what is good. That means what is good and lines up with the word of God. Hold on to that. Test it. Put it to a test. How do you put it to a test? Well, you pull your Bible up and say, well, I want to see if this matches anything anywhere in here. So next subtitle, how to test prophecy in the last days. Number one, God does not change his mind. He will not contradict himself. So if you get a prophetic word that contradicts what God said previously, throw it out. Second Timothy 2.13. It says there, if we are faithless, if us, we, you, me, are faithless, he remains faithful, he cannot deny himself. For God to deny himself means that God would commit suicide. He'd have to kill himself. Number two. New revelation from God will not contradict old revelation from God. Because we have a set of people that's always looking for new. You read a scripture that said, behold, you know, I, I, all things become new. Behold, I do a new thing. Well, it's new because it unfolded out of old revelation. It gave birth to something else. Matthew 5, 18. Anybody getting blessed yet? For shortly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot, one tittle, by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. He said, he said, he said, heaven and earth will pass away if, if in, in Hebrew writing a jot or another mark Somebody said a dot in the eye or a crossing of a T would fail that heaven and earth would pass away. Woo. If a grammatical error is done, that defaults, he said, heaven and earth will pass away. And it will not. 
Jesus in saying this opened up the understanding of ancient prophecies. But he did not destroy the law or the prophets. In nothing he said did he destroy them. He enhanced them and carried them to, to a new place. But it confirmed what had been prophesied. The fact that he was there standing there confirmed what was prophesied. Woo. When he read his resume to him, he confirmed what was written about him beforehand. Being born of a virgin was written beforehand. His name would be Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Jesus beforehand. Number three. Be sensitive to godly and ungodly prophecy. Be sensitive to it. How? The scripture provide a framework. Characteristic of ungodly prophecy is the underlying intent to manipulate. This intent has a name. It's called witchcraft. And in Paul's days, there were many that gave prophetic words for money. Second Peter 1, 19 through 21. I'm going to read it out the New King James Version. And just for clarity, I'm going to go to the Passion Translation. And here it is in 2 Peter 1, 19 through 21. Then I'm going to bounce down and give you the framework for which gave us this scripture. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in dark places. Wow. The prophetic word comes to bring light to darkness. Write that down. So when I get a prophetic word, it's supposed to lighten me, not darken me. And it says, as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Morning star. An understanding of Jesus. Knowing this first, knowing this first, everybody say first, first. That no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. Ooh, I'm trying to help. For prophecy never came by the will of man. But holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Holy men spoke as they were moved by what? Moved by what? So you can't even prophesy without the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit God? Oh, oh, oh. My goodness. My goodness. For clarity purposes, let's read this in the Passion Translation. Well, I'll read it. 
2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. And it says, and this is just so you understand. You must understand this at the outset or at the beginning. Interpretation of scriptural prophecy requires the Holy Spirit for it does not originate from someone's own imagination. It does not originate from someone's imagination because you can imagine man is good for imagining vain things and ungodly things. How many of you know your imagination can take you to some places? And you have emotions attached to them. And your imagination has been so active until you act it out in the natural. You imagine someone dislike you. So when the first thing you can do when you greet them, when you see them, before you can speak good, you grunt. Because you've been imagining what's been going on in your head as it relates to that relationship. And the scripture says, who can imagine a vain thing? No true prophecy, continuing the reading from the Passion Translation. No true prophecy comes from human initiative, but is inspired by the moving of the Holy Spirit upon those who spoke the message that came from God. Is that clear enough? Well, I want to back up and reference how we got this scripture. This scripture was referencing an event that happened on the Mount of Transfiguration where the disciples, some of the disciples were with Jesus and they saw him transfigured and they heard God speak about his son. And it's in 2 Timothy 1, 16 through 19. I didn't give it to you to put overhead, but I'm going to, um, to read it. Timothy 1, 16 through 19. One, did I have that right? No, 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 no. It should be First Peter. One sixteen through nineteen. I'm sorry, First Peter. And it says there, for we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Where was that majesty at? On the Mount of Transfiguration. This is Peter talking. I was up there with him. This is not a fable. This is not an untruth. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. Because Jesus transfigured around them. Second Peter, I'm sorry. 
Does it say first? Should be second Peter. Second Peter 16. Let me read it again. I'll make sure we're, we're accurate. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables. You there? Everybody there? All right. Sorry. When we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Where? On the Mount of Transfiguration. Where he was transfigured. He turned into a bright light before them. It was the glory of God on him. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. That means God spoke and this is what he said. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Do you see it? In whom I'm well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed. Which you do well to heed as a light that shines in dark places. Now it makes sense. They were up there with the light and they said, his light is confirmed to us. The prophecy is confirmed. That means what was told to us about him is confirmed right now. Are you there? Number four. Discern for the fruit of prophecy. Discern for the fruit of prophecy. Thank you. Matthew seven, fifteen through twenty. Discern for the fruit. A prophecy. This verse talks about the danger of false prophets and the decision between two trees and their fruit. Anytime a scripture starts out with saying beware, beware. Amen. It said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. They come with the authority of believers. Dressed the right way. But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them not by their words, but by their fruits, what they produce. Are you out there? That's how you know. And then it says there, I'm going to give you this, this, this comparative analysis that, so you'll understand knowing something by its fruits. Then it says, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes? No, thorn bushes don't produce grapes. Or figs from thistles. Thistles don't produce grapes. Whew. Even so. Everybody say even so. Every good tree bears good fruit. But bad trees bear bad fruit. Just makes sense. You can't be a good tree and, and, and bear bad fruit. And you can't be a bad tree and bear good fruit. And you go looking for good fruit on the bed. Maybe some of it is okay. 
Have you ever been in the market looking through the grapes and you're looking to make sure that they're all right? But, but you can't just look at the grapes on the top. You have to look where the grapes is connected to the vine. And sometimes I've, I've gone in a little deeper and I notice a, a, a little fuzzy something right at the connection between the grape and the vine. It means that they're not good. Even though on the top they look good. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You examine your fruit for soft spots, weightiness. Usually a good watermelon is heavy. It's weighty. Good oranges don't, don't, they have a certain smell. They, they weighty. Although here lately, I've been getting little food fruit. Look good, but it's not. And price is not the indicator that the fruit is going to be good. <laughs> oh, come on. I couldn't help that. I just had. Whew. Come on. Every tree, reading some more from Matthew 7. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. And that's talking about the prophetic word. You will know it whether it is fruitful. Does it come to pass? Does something godly come out of it? Does something God-honoring come out of it? Does something that make you want to give glory to God come out of it? Does it express the will of God in the earth? Woo! Not your will, but his will. Because many times the prophecy is greater than you. It's all about him. Working his will through you. Let me go back and break this down. Beware of false prophets. Jesus just warned us of a path that leads to destruction. And, and, and the one place that you can start off as protecting yourself is beware. Be cautious. The reason why you're being cautious is because the truth can be manipulated and violated. The devil did it with Jesus. He manipulated the truth. Using scripture. This is why you must know the scripture. So your truth knowledge can stand up against the lie. Nobody can fool you if you know the truth. How many know I'm right about that? How many has somebody lied to your face but you knew the truth in the back of your head and you just let them keep talking? You're wicked for letting them keep talking. You just let them, I'm, I'm teasing. You just let them keep talking. Like I'm, I'm going to see how deep you're going to dig this hole. Your mama knew when you were lying. She just stood there and said, I'm going to see how long you're going to carry this lie out. And my grandmother used to say of, of one of my brothers, you a lying wonder. I never knew what that was, but when I thought of him, I said, she was right. He is a wonderful liar. <laughs> then I found it in the word. You a lying wonder. You lie wonderfully. It's, it's, it's believable. We know some lying wonders. And people believe. Because they'd rather believe a lie than the truth. 
who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. They deceive because it helps them deny, it, it, it helps cover up their true character. The basic fault of the false prophet is self-interest. Anybody that prophesies along their own agenda, it is self-interest. My God. It is not God's idea. You need to pay attention to parts of their life and their ministry. Let me give them to you. What are some of the parts of their life that you need to discern in order to receive a prophetic word from them? Their manner of living. Whew. My God. Their manner of living. Do they show righteousness, humility, and faithfulness in the way they live? Oh, that's a biggie. The content of their teaching is the next one. Is it true fruit from the word of God? Can you find it? Just like just before, I want to make sure I got the scripture correct because it has to be the truth of God's word and not sayings from me. Or the baby in the house. The next one. The effects of their teaching. So here they are again. The manner of living. The content of their teaching. The effects of their teaching. Are people growing in Jesus or are they merely being entertained? There's some people, they only go to places where the entertainment factor is high. I had people ask me, I had a friend one time ask me, man, you got a bomb choir? You got to bomb this, bomb that. Well, you want to be entertained, buy you a ticket and go somewhere. Well, it's the bomb. <laughs> are are y'all listening at me? Let's, let, let's examine that, that, that fruit tree thing again. I need to just hit some other things in there. Every tree that does not bear good fruit. Clark the theologian says this. Not to have good fruit is to be evil. Oh, that hit it in the head. Is to be evil. There can be no innocent sterility. In the invisible tree of the heart. He that bringeth forth no fruit and he that bringeth forth bad fruit are both only fit for the fire. So if you deliver in bad fruit or you're not bringing forth any fruit, you're sterile, you're still fit for the fire. Ooh. It is not merely the wicked. The bearer of poison berries that will be cut down, but the neutral. The man who bears no fruit of positive virtue must be cast into the fire. That means you don't stand for nothing. You neutral. You got good fruit? No. Nah. You got bad fruit? No. I'm just in the middle. Cut him down. Oh, you didn't like that one. 
The neutral place is along the lines of can we all get along? Next, everybody believes their own way. This is how we do it today. Don't judge me. Ooh. When the Bible says, if we would judge ourselves, we won't get judged. Your current reality in 2021 does not disavow the ancient scriptures. Just because this is the way we do it now. A man who did it his way in his day said this. He said, there is nothing new under the sun. You thought it was new because you did it. Wow. Number five, and the last one, as we move to a close. Does the prophecy lead you to Jesus and his mission left to the church? Does the prophecy lead you to Jesus and the mission he left to the church? Revelation 19 and 10 says, and this is a conversation with angels. An angel was speaking and talking to John that we call the revelator. He wrote revelations. And it reads there, and I fell as it at his feet to worship him. The, John fell down to worship him, this angel, because he was such a awesome being but he said to me see that you do not do that I am your fellow servant and your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. I've got his testimony I'm an angel and I know Jesus' testimony worship God don't worship me worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. My God. So every prophecy that goes forth should be testifying of Jesus and his mission in the earth. What is some of the testimony of Jesus when he said, love your neighbor as yourself? Well, that knocks the hell out of racism. Give and it will be given to you. That counsels greed. Lay down his life for someone else. That's the true essence of a friend. Was raised from the dead to the glory of God to, to assure we could do the same. That means he wants us to get the benefits of salvation forever. Declared greater works will you do. He wants you to expand his kingdom. That's a part of the testimony of Jesus. Prophecy points to the testimony of Jesus. Blessings to you today. Blessings to you today again. If you heard these words and we trust that you understood because we wanted to fill you with understanding and the will of God in the earth. We want to appeal to somebody and make a call to somebody that hasn't surrendered their life to the Lord. You can say these words after us. Give them your heart. Give them your mind. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of my sin and I give you my life. Come into my heart. 
be my Lord, be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in miracles. I believe one day you were born of a virgin. You died on a cross. Three days later, you were raised from the dead to the glory of your Father. And on that confession, I am saved. Thank you for saving us and coming into our heart. Amen. Find a good church. We're Dove Church on the corner of Military and Horatio. 466 Military in the city of Detroit, Michigan, 48210. You can write us, call us, 313-361-3683. Plug in our name for our website. Get inf good information about how to give and help us carry out the ministry of Jesus in the earth. We love you and thank God for you. We look forward to joining you at another point in the future. God bless you again. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you. We encourage your financial support of this ministry. Dove Church is good ground. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at Dove Church slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.